Welcome to It's All About the Questions, where learning to ask the right questions can help you achieve lifelong success. Now, here to help you ask all the right questions is award-winning author, international speaker, and business strategist, Laura Stewart. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. As always, my favorite time of the week is when I get to do this with you live on iHeartRadio, and also for those listening on the podcast, I love it when I get to get word from you that you've listened to the show and that you're getting something out of it. For me, this is a passion project that the letters and the emails and the social media posts I get from people saying how much the shift in perspectives you've gotten from my guests that are on the show really made a major difference. How you've just implemented one or two things that my guests talk about, or somehow it just made you shift something in your mind or your body that made a massive difference for you. And my guest today I know for a fact he's going to do that, at least for me, because every time I talk to him, shifts happen for me, and I love it. Or I've got, returning to the show, Harry Burlesford, the wear, man who wears many hats. And, um, I, you know, Harry, I'm just so glad to have you back on the show talking about what we're going to be talking about today. Well, it's a pleasure to be back, and I, I'm excited. In fact, I'd go as far as to say, Laura, it's been too long. So it thanks so for has. having me. It, it so has been too long. You know, I wish I had the show more than once a week just because there's so many people I want to talk to about so many different things. And when you reached out to me because you've got um, a new book coming out, which, I, you know, we're, we're not going to talk a lot about it. We're going to talk about the concepts of it. Um, That's the, right. The, the book is How to Be an MSP. For those of you who have been following my show for a while, I used to be an MSP, a managed service provider, when I had my tech business for 15 years. And Harry's got a great book about 90-day fast track. But, Harry, you called me and you were like, Laura, I want to talk about this. And it blew me away because I've always believed in the power of vertical business. And for those of you who don't know, um, vertical means picking a niche, right? Something that you're going to work with those kind of clients And my guest, though, last week was Dan Morris, and we really talked about this in depth on there. So it's really perfect, Harry, that you're on the show after after Dan was on the show. Um, You you believe that cannabis is the next major market, whether you're in tech and trying to put technology into the cannabis market, or whether you're in any kind of business looking for at the fact that cannabis i mean statistics are showing it's expected to grow a minimum of 21 percent a year between now and 2021 i mean that's crazy yeah yeah it's uh if not the strongest sector in north america it's certainly in in the top three um i do think the defense sector is especially strong right now and laura i'm probably forgetting another sector so Suffice it to say, it's in the top three sectors in terms of legitimate business opportunities. Absolutely. And it's really just because of all the legalization that has begun to happen that this has yeah. really sprouted up as, no pun intended, sprouted up as, <laughs> a, as, as, a, major, as a major market for, that needs ancillary services that we can provide. Yeah, yeah, and you know, understand. Uh, my my mission is is to make sure we uh, stay on the straight and narrow as people view this vertical, right? So you know, this is in no way promoting, uh, c- condoning um, the actual consumption. That's a that's a personal choice. That's a confidential choice, Laura. We tend to see the choices that are made the most wisely concern medical use. Um, so appetite and nausea for cancer patients, that kind of thing. So, so let's let's keep that conversation over in that realm. Right, now, and I'm fine with that, that because I've never done it. Sure, <laughs> and I, sure. you know, it's just not something where my I don't want to do that to myself. But the medical marijuana market, the medical cannabis market, has literally saved so many of my friends or friends yeah. of friends, family members who have severe cancer and pain levels and they can't do the oxys and, and that has That's its right. own set of damages. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's widely uh, part of my research, Laura, two years of research uh, on, on the book, uh, looking at every dimension uh, of it. And the doctors uh, in palliative care, um, you know, while they won't necessarily uh, promote it or, or quote-unquote write a prescription, um, they are allowed to speak of it, to, to have a conversation with you. And oftentimes they're just confirming the uh, medicinal qualities. Um, so first of all, there's not they, they don't have the side effects. You hit on a very important point about the uh, the the morphine based um, palliative care, you know, painkillers. So you, you, you don't have the side effects. More importantly, the little research they've done, the little research they're allowed to do. Um, you, you don't have bad interactions, right? So the medicinal use doesn't somehow fight with oxy or something, right? Because we, 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 we don't want that. But yeah, to your point, um, when you look at it from pain management or palliative care, uh, it's, it's, it's a very legitimate thing. And, um, but, but Laura, you know, to, to, to kind of catch one of the points that, that flew by, um, so my book is primarily on the technology. Now, I am involved in another startup uh, that deals with the government affair and regulatory and compliance side. And that's a, uh, we acquired, a, in fact, a radio show out of uh, uh, KLAY AM dial Tacoma. Um, the show started, I believe, 2012. Uh, we acquired it. Uh, I have a partner with that, and we converted it to YouTube. And Laura, that's where I love the conversation to start, if not end, is government affairs, compliance, traceability, regulation. And Laura, just to maybe sign off on that, that, that paradigm, uh, even people who have uh, religious reasons or, or political views, and, and they're just not on board, but they see the value of a regulated, controlled market very much like the pharmaceutical industry where um, it's, it's controlled by barcode down to the, you know, down, down, down to the, in, by analogy, the pill, right? You, you, you know, Laura, how a pharmacy has to track every single pill. Mm. <laughs> yeah, very much and, so. And, and people who at face value don't support what's going on. Um, they're not impressed by the economics. They're not impressed by this or that. By, by the time we finish this show, and that's not the reason we're here, but, but figuratively, by the time we finish this show, people understand that you do not want to go back to the black market where there's not even the possibility of quality control recall if we have a problem. Um, and I, Laura, I could go on and on, and that's right. not... And then the That's purpose of really the show, the show. <laughs> right? And, and what we want to talk about today, and if you're not interested in exploring doing business with people in the cannabis market, then this isn't the right show for you. But I promise you that you're going to get something out of it because this may lead you to think of some other vertical markets Absolutely. that you never thought of before that your business may be able to assist. So think, of, look of it in the bigger picture of we're exploring this whole idea of, oh my God, there's this whole new segment of the business world that needs services that your business yeah. may be able to provide. Well, if I can be so bold, you know, the, the, the way your show is about asking the, the, the questions, um, that's what resulted in this book. Okay. So, so what's happened, this is my 21st book and, um, what I, I took a 10-year pause, so I wrote like a madman in the 90s and 2000s, and then Laura, a funny thing called Life Happened, and the boys were becoming teenagers, and it, 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 it all made sense right. to focus on the family for about a decade. They're happily launched, and I'm back. And what happened over that decade, because of uh, going to the technology side, uh, servers went away, um, arguably in my community about 2012 with the retirement of our beloved small business server. I loved that product. <laughs> exactly. And we, we made good money and we provided good services. And then there was the pivot to cloud where the, uh, the, the value chain is dramatically different. Um, and, and, and then don't forget we had the great recession. <laughs> it's not, let's, let's not let that go unsaid. <laughs> true. Very true. 
and it was kind of the perfect storm, if you will. And so, Laura, what what happened was, and and, and I'm, I'm I'm telling the truth here, is that people when I would go to conferences and do what I do, um, they'd come up and go, Harry, you know, appreciate the books on server side and all that. What, Harry, what do I do now? What do I do? And Laura, you know, you're you're tapped into the community. You know, we have community members who are are making less than they made 10 years ago. Because they can't and, pivot. They can't figure out the pivot that they need to make. Right. And they ask, what do I do now? And I said, well, you know, here's, here's the thing, guys. You know, I got in small business server undercover behind the scenes in 97. It really didn't hit the market till mid, late 98. And so I do fancy myself as what I like to call risk forward, right? That, that, that I, I like to get into sectors early, um, and Laura, I probably stay in sectors too long, right? We, we all have a blind spot in business and I tend to stay too long in sectors, but I do get in early and that's exactly where we're at with the vertical that I, um, use this. And, and to your point, I use as an example in the book, but the book is much more than my example, but, but Laura, it all started with a question. So I wanted to give you a love tap on that one. Well, that's thank exactly you, what happened. It really is all about the questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so the question was, how do I move the dial forward? What was the question? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was just as simple as again, guys, guys and gals. But you know, uh, forget the gender reference because our tech sector is predominantly male. Um, and 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 you know, they they'd say, you know, they're kind of in my age range. So that means kids going to college and you know, retirement's closer than, than, the, than it looked in the rearview mirror at this point. And so I, uh, and I've always believed in verticalization. So then it comes down to, well, if you're going to, you know, have a vertical strategy, um, you for darn sure have to pick a vertical that's healthy. In fact, Laura, maybe that, I think that's the third vertical I forgot is healthcare. Hel- healthcare. <laughs> that's right. a huge vertical. <laughs> Although the medical so profession to, has a tendency to be the least willing to spend money on anything to move them forward. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. And so the answer is pick a vertical and uh, pick one that is growing. So you're swimming, you know, with the uh, the current and not against the current. And and Laura, our 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 community. There's to, to your point, there's a lot of people that are swimming against the current, and that's, you know, that's exhausting, right? And um, so that's, that's how the book came to be. And then uh, I laid out, you know, the fundamentals that relate, quite frankly, to any professional services business, but specifically to the managed service provider or MSP um, business model. So that's, that's where we start. <laughs> okay. So then, you know, you and I were talking, and we're talking about the cannabis market. And, you know, it's all over the TV shows now. You know, the cannabis dispensaries, the this and that. They're carrying the cash back and forth, that it's regulated, but they're really not allowed to get certain federal protections. That's right. So if somebody is interested in doing business in the cannabis market, what are some of the things that they need to do to to consider supporting them to protect themselves as well? Well, um, so my book has been in print since I believe the pub date was technically April 21st. Um, so, you know, recently. Uh, and, and the uh, digital version was a few weeks before. So a few of the people that bought the digital version as soon as that came out are already doing it, and to some extent already have. And here's the consistent thread that we're seeing. Uh, The gentleman in Southern California was already going to um, cannabis business and cannabis technology meetups. And, you know, meetup.com. And, and you know, that, Laura, that essentially replaced what we used to call user groups, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I just recently and, found my CompuServe login and all that information. <laughs> that, no, that's right. And that, that's kind of my number one biz dev recommendation is either start a meetup or go to a meetup. And I, I went and looked at the one in California. 
that uh, he's been attending, and it has like it's like twenty four hundred members. I mean, it's a big deal. This and is not a small thing. No, no, and it's a, it's got you know it's got legs, and so I chatted with him, and, and in fact, I'm going to have him be uh, participate on the site that we dedicated the book, have you know contribution about his journey. So my book reaffirmed what he's already doing, and and then you know he was able to extract a couple other tips and tricks. Okay, so, so so let's share some of that stuff. Well, so you know the 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 other thing would be that you have to uh, uh, learn the language. Um, so this industry, and this is more the example from the gentleman in Denver, and I'm going to attend a industry conference with him in mid June in New Orleans. Uh, it's a leading conference, MJ Biz. And he, we're, we're going to share Airbnb. We're going we're to rent a whole unit, Laura, and save a little money. Okay, <laughs> makes sense. Um, and he wants to shadow me for three days because he understands the street credibility of talking the talk in a vertical. So this is akin to if you were going to be in the legal vertical or the medical vertical, you for darn sure have to have some basic knowledge. Medical is a very simple example. You probably should read uh, some other MSP books out there um, on HIPAA, right? So you kind of got to know the vertical to be taken seriously in your business development efforts. And so we're going to go talk to vendors ranging from agriculture to commercial kitchens all the way down to uh, uh, point of sale for dispensaries. The show will have it all. And I said, you know, you you, you gotta you, you gotta walk the walk and talk the talk to be accepted in this industry. And Laura, what's unique about it is this industry, for right or wrong, uh, you, you, you could call it the 1920s, 1930s, uh, a, 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 akin to you know the alcohol industry and like what Atlantic City looked like. So a lot of these people, by necessity, came from the black market. They're now legit in the white market. But they bring forward uh, a, a little bit of um, skepticism. You, you have to earn their trust. Does that make sense? That you're breaking into a vertical, you got to kind of pay your dues, hang in there, talk the talk, go to the meetups, and earn their trust. So that's another tactic. And what I'm suggesting in the book is we can put the foundation in place in 90 days, right? So first of all, read the book in 90 days. <laughs> Number two start with some of the things I, I suggest and then hang in there. And then uh, I, with, with, within a year, this should be cash flow positive, right? It does take a little while, but you got to have that baseline. Right, Laura, if you and I put ourselves in an MSP practice and said we do law firms that do antitrust, we could probably get our first meetings within 90 days. That's fair. It might take a little longer to get that purchase order from the law firm, <laughs> if yes, that makes sense. <laughs> because it's, it's a very unique market. And, and I can understand yeah. what you're talking about, especially in the cannabis market. But any vertical, you really need to prove that you understand their business. And it's not just about, oh, this computer will work in their business or um, this say you're selling um, promotional products, you know, you need to find out if legally they can s use promotional products in the cannabis industry. So you need to understand the legal aspects of the vertical, in this case, cannabis. You need to understand the mental state of the people doing the business and then other parts of it as well. There are a business, so you need to understand business. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and in fact, it's even more than that, Laura. This is the, one of the hidden jewels in the book in terms of tactics is these owner-operators are indeed, at this point in the industry structure, small business, small and medium business operators. Um, you don't have enterprise consolidation yet. You are seeing it in Canada already because they're federally legal. So, for example, Corona uh, invested $4 billion dollars into the industry in Canada and is starting to consolidate. So it is going to happen, but right now they're SMBs and they are hungry 
for your uh, business knowledge and business acumen. And so I have a section where I, I, I dust off a tired old praise, Laura, called Trusted Business Advisor. And please don't hang up on me since I said that. I brought it back. <laughs> no, I, I, I say all the time on my show, people who do business with people they know, like, and trust. Yeah. And the um, owner-operators are not the best business people in that particular segment. And that is really where you can make a difference. And, you know, I just got feedback last week. Uh, I, I was unable to attend, but I just got feedback from my friends over at SAP, you know, the German ERP um, software, supply chain software company. And uh, that was a big topic, apparently, at SAP Sapphire last week. I think it was in Orlando. And um, that's the state of the union, right? The, 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 the tech companies get it, and they understand they can have purpose-built solutions. But Laura, is, is, you know, supply chain management and ERP does not happen on its own. It, it takes that analyst hat. <laughs> to, you know, SAP is a big enchilada. <laughs> and therein lies the opportunity. So it really... So, you know, I hear a number of different things, and one of the ways that my tech business separated from a lot of others was we focused on business consulting, and technology right. was a part of it. That's right. So with this cannabis business, it, a number of these people have not run successful businesses that have to follow a lot of procedures and if you can show them how you can help them build and, and grow their business, I mean, there's a really interesting statistics. 36% of executive positions in the cannabis industry are women. I, I love I, that. I would say even more, if you don't mind. Um, when I went to MJ Biz Fall, so earlier in the show, I referenced what is called MJ Biz Next. That's basically their spring show, it's smaller, probably, you know, 3,000 people in New Orleans. Um, MJ Biz Fall, uh, just as a point of reference, it's, it's the conference, right? Like, or if you and I were to agree that, with all due respect, but, but let's just say IT Nation is, is sort of a must-do in the MSB community. I'm yep. comfortable with that. Um, that's what this is, right? This is the category killer show. And, and, and three years ago, it was 7,500 people at the Rio, where we used to hold SMB Nation. Two years ago, 15,000 people at the convention center. Last year, I went 30,000 people with over 1,000 exhibitors at the convention center. I'll be back in November, but more to the point, um, I, I, I had an assistant because it was such a big show. And and we were in uh, a friend of mine, and she and I agreed. It was about sixty percent of the attendees were women, so it is um, very very diverse in in a good way, <laughs> which is uncommon for for many industries. And but if there if there's thirty thousand people going to this conference, and the speakers are all talking about business about marketing about all these different things then yep. your local cannabis organization is probably desperate to have somebody that can even talk to them and understand them and and we're going to yep. take that right into the national news break we're here with harry brelsford author of how to be an msp but really it's more about how to grow a business and we're talking specifically about the cannabis vertical that and how you can begin to interact with the cannabis vertical in your business and grow it and expand it. And Harry, you know, he's the man who wears many hats. He's totally amazing. When we come back, we're going to go more in depth on some different things that you can begin to do tips and, and, tr and strategies to mm -hmm. grow mm -hmm. your business with any vertical. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I love my music. I was sitting here dancing, and uh, my favorite Noah in the booth was dancing as well, too, to it. So obviously it's catchy. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Another day we'll talk about how long it took several years ago to actually pick out the music and build up all those different things because it's part of building, excuse me, no voice today, part of building a business. And 
If you missed the first half of the show, you'll want to catch it on podcasts anywhere you listen to podcasts. Just um, put in It's All About the Questions or Laura Stewart and it'll pop, pop up anywhere you can get podcasts. Or you can go to It's All About the Questions dot com and listen to the shows there. But, you know, we, we talk about building a business a lot on this show. And Harry, in the first half of the show, you were talking about, you know, your great new book, How to Be an MSP, but it really goes so much further because a lot of my listeners are not MSPs. They're not geeks. They're not in that that business world, but the book really translates to beyond that. You know, the people who are building a cannabis business, it's really no different from me building the business of my radio show or building my tech business or building anything. You want to surround yourself with the best and brightest that can help you grow your business. And yeah, yeah. And cannabis is a very polarizing business. To say the least. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're not here to get into that conversation about how polarizing uh, it is. Keep it, keep it medical, keep it CBD for today's purposes, and right. we'll do just fine. <laughs> but yet at the same time, because it's so polarizing, there are a lot of businesses that don't want to do business with the cannabis market. Correct. Which means that if you're willing to do business and can do business the right way to help them grow and yourself grow, that, you know, it's like the wild, wild west. Get in there on the ground floor. It's small business server in 1997 all over again. And, and Laura, to dovetail from last hour, and we probably checked off on it, but that's why you want to pick a niche that is going to be uh, growing, for lack of a better word, because... If you hit, uh, there's riches and niches, but maybe maybe more important, you know, this is business one on one hundred one. My book is Finder Minder Grinder for Professional Services Business One Hundred One. <laughs> but you know, I I I firmly believe this, Harry, that business one hundred one applies whether you're a startup or a business that's been around for twenty years, whether you're making ten dollars a year in your business or you're making a hundred million a year in your business. If you forget business 101, somewhere along the way it's going to bite you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the way I, t- t- two things on, on that. Um, the first is the, the way I have always sold books and, and, and I appreciate the loyalty of the readers is this book, any of my books, should always be revisited by either the, the person just breaking into it or, to your point, the established person. Because we, we don't read enough. You know, if you read 20 to 30 minutes in the morning, which a CEO should do, um, you, you, you knock out, I, God, I, I think the stat was like six or 12 books a year, right? I mean, it's, it's astounding if you just read. And you always learn something when you read. Um, and, and this book has it for both parties, right? You should always be revisiting the fundamentals because, you know, Laura, we all get caught up in, in, in the day-to-day. And, and part and partial to that is this should not be the only book you read. Now, this is the only book in the world on this particular topic uh, as, as far as my Amazon search shows that, um, there's not an explicit book on cannabis technology opportunities for managed services provider. I'm sure there will be another, but it's not. Uh, it's it's the only one in the world on this topic. However, Laura, my friend and yours, Carl Palachek, is a prolific our, uh, author. Oh, I love and my that. point, <laughs> yeah, and my point is read them all. Right? I don't compete with Carl. I mean, Laura in in college or grad school. Did you really just read one book on finance? Absolutely not. You probably had to buy six. <laughs> well, it, it's, that's what the whole point of my show is. It's you need all those different perspectives in order mm-hmm. to formulate the best one. If you don't, if you only have one perspective, then I really don't think you can reach your highest potentials. Well, and then the other comment I was going to make along these lines. Uh, and I just love the free flow nature of your show. So you know, I don't have a teleprompter in front of me. It is the real, the real Harry. Um, there's a CPA. So what's a CPA? A CPA is a service provider, much like an MSP. Quite frankly, it's a lot of the same binder, minder, grinder. A lot of the same workflow. This gentleman in Bend, Oregon, started providing accounting services to the cannabis industry and. 
he had to go learn it because there's a lot of regulation, right? So he had to learn how to do that. Well, he turned that into a community that now has over 200 bookkeepers and CPAs paying him, I think it's $3,500 for a course on how to be uh, in that vertical. And the way he sells it, Lauren, you're going to love this. So, you know, forget about Gap and um, tax and all that. That's uh, sh- maybe you should get him on the show, and he could go on certainly for an hour. But <laughs> <laughs> um, he had a really good twist on it, and in fact, I'm going to write him and I'm going to ask if I can steal it. Is that, um, Mr. Accountant, you should be getting paid what you're worth by clients, and you should work for clients you like. And that's what this new vertical does. Is if you educate yourself. Put yourself in this game. Will it take a CPA anywhere from 90 days to 12 months to get into this vertical? Yes, it will. Um, But isn't it time that you start getting paid what you're worth from clients who have cash and are well capitalized and, more importantly, working with clients you enjoy? And, Laura, like I say, I'm going to steal it, but I'm going to let them know I did out of a courtesy. And then it's called a swipe, (laughs) stealing with integrity, pride, and enthusiasm. (laughs) But, I mean, isn't that cool, the way he summed up the whole thing? I met him really, really late in the book, so he's not written up. He is on our site, and he is a video interview. So my site is intended to be a living book with video interviews, and, you know, that's how I'm going to add value, right? Buy the book. Is that uh, 420msp.com? Is that it? 420msp.com, everybody, to get some of that stuff. Yeah, he's in the vault. If you click on the vault and go to videos, you'll see him as one of the more recent contributions. <laughs> All right. So, so let's talk about if you've been in business for a long time, whether you're in tech or some other service industry like accounting or legal or whatever, and now all of a sudden you see that this cannabis market is is growing and that they're going to need services. You, you talked about in the first half of the show... You need to understand the business, go to some of the conferences, go to meetups, those kind of things. Are there other questions you need to ask yourself when you're thinking about looking into a very controversial market like this? Because I think a lot of people go, oh, I just want to capitalize on a new market. But then they get into it and they go, oh, I never thought that that could happen to me because I'm in the market. Yeah, so let's. Let me answer. Let me. I'm, I'm going to answer your question in probably ways that. That's fine. That's don't what I love about your you. question. That right, works. right. So, let me try this. Um, I did a reach out to where I had tremendous success in the early 2000s with small business server was Australia. You know, Laura probably made ten trips down there. Every trip was essentially a working vacation. I loved it, and. That on a per capita basis, they were actually the best market in the world for small business server. And again, per capita. And um, so I reached out to some of the uh, thought leaders. You, you probably know some of the names floating around our community. And I said, you know, with your fall SMB IT Pro conference in Adelaide, is this topic of interest, even though it's only on the books, Australia is CBD legal? but it's not available, right? And that's, again, on the regulatory side, that's a whole other conversation to have it on the books as legal, but then not have availability. (laughs) This show broadcasts out of Florida, we get it here. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and so they said, no, Harry, I mean, always welcome to come to Australia. You know, your, your, your fall, our spring, always welcome. Um, your speech is not welcome. They said, you know, this is the, the, they're too conservative. And they said, you know, people would actually walk out of the room with your speech. And I said, I, I, I get it. You know, no, no, no problem. Um, had a reader uh, who uh, wanted to be removed from uh, the, the, uh, my mailing list um, out of the UK because he had strong philosophical issues with the nature of this vertical. Wrote him, he, he wrote a very nice note, Laura, by the way. You know, lowercase, not, not uppercase. Very right. nice note. Um, not his thing. I said, no problem. <laughs> and maybe to finally answer your question, you know, folks, you're going to have to confront that uh, decision point. We talk about it in the book. Um, you're going to have to confront that decision point. But 
I'm finding it's getting easier and easier and easier over time. Uh, Laura, two weeks ago, I had the big reveal of my book in Chicago at the Channel Pro SMB Summit. Um, handsome audience, by the way. I mean, it was a nice sized crowd. And that Friday, that was on a Thursday, that Friday, the uh, state of Illinois had two senators introduce a 300 page bill that the governor is chomping at the bit to sign, you know, before the adjournment that legalizes all the way through recreational. And in the state of Illinois, it's a really interesting story. I saw it on the evening news, and then I made it part of my presentation um, the, 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 the next day. But what was interesting, Laura, is they're strictly focused on taxation. Apparently, Illinois has a budget deficit, and the numbers are astounding. The state of Washington now pulls in a billion dollars in tax revenue. And boy, howdy, that will overcome a lot of ideological and political opposition real quick. <laughs> yes, but yet, as you explained, there are some people that will have trouble with it. And I think that's one of Absolutely. the biggest issues for a business that's thinking about maybe starting to do business in other verticals in other areas, looking at your existing customer base, if they find out that you're in the industry, are you willing to lose those customers if yep, yep, they yep. leave you? You have to think about those things. What's your, what's your pain point? Are you willing to, to let that go? Well, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, and again, I'm risk forward. So, you know, I, I, I take, take, take my advice. It's worth exactly what you paid for it today. <laughs> right. But it's important for um, people to ask these kind of questions when they're oh, looking, especially no. something as controversial as this, like people that maybe help support abortion clinics with technology no, right. or with other services, you know, understanding how if you're risk forward or you're not and you're willing to take the chance is right. an important thing to consider before you just dive in. Yeah, I mean, you know, Elon Musk, uh, Tesla fame and, you know, uh, spacecraft and all that, clearly risk forward, but clearly um, it's he's not everybody's cup of tea, right? And, 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 and so... I, I guess here, here's the sage advice I would offer is that when you're racing sailboats and you're, you know, sailboats tend to stick together right in the pack as they go around the course and the buoys. But if you're so far behind, doggone it, you know what you do is you do an opposite tack and you go the other way <laughs> <laughs> from the fleet. And um, boy, howdy, Laura, you, you, you can hit some home runs in your career if you view it that way. But, you know, sometimes you stall because the wind ain't blowing. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's going to be an individual choice. It's not for everybody. Um, that might also be a barrier of entry in the industry that creates an opportunity for the people that are comfortable with serving that industry, right? Because you're, you're, you're naturally, people are self-selecting themselves out of that vertical, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think they're self-selecting themselves out without really understanding the vertical. And the fact that right now it may be controversial, but six months or a year from now or two years from now, it may not be. There's going to be something else that's going to be controversial. Yeah, I mean, you know, Laura, I don't know if you're aware, but uh, kind of double-clicking on this issue, but the uh, Re Republic, I believe it's in the Senate, it's the tobacco states, Republican senators, known for, you know, being a more conservative region, but they have introduced a bill. Um, don't know if it's going to pass in this administration. It may take a couple runs, but it, this is literally introduced by the Republican uh, legislators to legalize hemp in all 50 states, the industrial version without the uh, psychotic, you know, the THC chemicals and all right. that, you know, used in manufacturing. And, um, and their skin in the game is the fact that the tobacco farmers need a replacement crop. And so they are completely comfortable with industrial hemp. And that's going to open up 
in all likelihood, the federal banking system, it's probably going to address the Schedule One narcotic classification. And, you know, right now, for your listeners that are even the, you know, the slightest bit curious about this vertical, now is the time you should be educating yourself, right? Laura, before I ever make an investment, I definitely do due diligence. And I talk about that in the book. Yeah, you had two and a half years <laughs> of research and preparation on this topic <laughs> alone. And yeah. you've seen that cannabis industry change significantly from when you first started doing research to today. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely, uh, you're seeing uh, the big boy with money flow in. i give you an example. I'm an investor, full disclosure, in a uh, ISV, independent software vendor in Redmond, Washington, former Microsoft, uh, you know, Laura, I'm not going to say executives, but former Microsoft program managers. And they have uh, they sold out their Series A, 125,000 a share. They sold out the Series A very quickly, right? Because the sophistication level of the investors is they're willing to put money into that. And I talk about it a little bit in the book, but Laura, what they did was um, not only do they have a supply chain management program for what we call seed to sale, but more importantly, they they focused on, gosh, starting in 2013, they put five years into engineering, bootstrapping a global application program interface, global API that will connect any system to any of the federal, state, local, county, um, government taxation authorities for compliance and inventory control. And that's a beautiful thing because otherwise you have non-business people filling out spreadsheets. And that's the last thing a lot of these owner-operators want to do at night. <laughs> yeah, I have a smile on my face because I've had some clients <laughs> that used to do that. And when I first started my, my tech business, everything was in my head on spreadsheets, on whiteboards. And then people started creating the technologies that automated all of that. Yeah. So people yeah. should also be thinking about what tools does this industry specifically need that you can potentially create? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That and, um, you know, Laura, we're seeing a lot of innovation over in the blockchain area. So not not just um, inventory control or supply chain. Like, you know, blockchain hit a home run with uh, international shipping and distribution to track the doggone, you know, items in the container ships. Um, but so we have that, but more importantly, the state of Washington now takes the majority of its taxation payments via cryptocurrency um, because the industry technically has to work outside the federal banking system. So the state of Washington opened up crypto. It's called Posibit. They're using a currency called Posibit. And um, Laura, it's that kind of thinking, again, Totally appreciate political, religious, ideological opposition, but, but once we get past that, I think reasonable people can have a reasonable conversation about, you know, asking, to your point, asking, where are the gaps, right? Where are the gaps in the technology? And boy, howdy, it's the Wild West. <laughs> so it was interesting you talked about the, the banking stuff. Yep. So if you're doing business with the cannabis industry can they only pay you in cash or in cryptocurrency i mean do if they don't have bank accounts and things like that how do they write checks how do they do business like that uh so let's take it from the uh supply chain point of view so 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 first of all this this this, this would apply to growers known as producers, to the manufacturers, known as processors, and to the retailers, known as dispensaries. And because they're actually touching the product, they uh, cannot operate in the federal banking system. So there's a couple of things. The um, state chartered credit unions can work with them because they don't have, um, they're not federally chartered. So what you'll see at trade shows in these conferences is you have the credit unions. Um, and or it's pretty cool because you got to remember, I think it was the 1930s or whenever the credit union movement started in reaction to the big bad banks, 
right? That's that's how credit the credit union movement was a populist movement, right? Based on some kind of common um, community, like Bo- Bo- Boeing employees, right? Boeing right. employees started the Boeing credit union to make car loans because the bid bad bid, bid, the bad banks wouldn't do it. Um, that's come full circle. They they can work that way. Um, crypto would be another way um, that they can pay their bills. Now, the what's important to make a distinction of is the CPA firm that provides professional services to a cannabis entity um, can be paid uh, just normally. They they. They, they don't have to accept crypto or, or you know, whatever. You, you know what I'm saying? The CPA firm is not denied the ability to work inside the federal banking system. They're an accounting firm, right? They're just providing a professional service. Right. Um, a call center I know in Las Vegas is the same way, right? It's just a, a service bureau. And um, But on the, on, on the customer side, so I've just kind of told you about how the owner operators inside the industry work now on the customer side we we see it all uh so for example um yes you you, you typically go into the dispensary and you know 60 80 100 dollars in cash to to get whatever you're seeking and yes that is true but there's some really interesting variations that but so first of all all of the um all, all the sites have atms and the atm companies are thrilled because they're upcharging on the ATM fee. <laughs> Let me tell right, you. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and they, they, they were at that MJ Biz show. I mean, it's a huge industry for ATM operators. Number two was gift cards. So what MedMen, a dispensary in Las Vegas, did, um, I went and talked to them. And what they do, Laura, is they sell gift cards like Safeway or whatever your favorite grocer is in your region. Right. Um, you, you, you know how you can get a, a Netflix card or an Amazon card right. at the checkout counter? Same thing. They sell the gift card, um, and then they have a, the immediate redemption of the gift card, okay. and that skirts the federal banking regulations. Daniel Burris, who wrote the Anticipatory Organization, which my listeners hear me talk about all the time, would just be so excited to hear about how these people are all figuring out a way, anticipating what needs to be done right now and in the future. And Harriet, we've only got a, about a minute 40 left in the show. So how do people reach out to you? How do they get the book? And uh, last thought. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, last thoughts, it's the Wild West. That's good and bad. But, you know, in Texas, we're, we're called wildcatters, if that helps anyone put any one of these. <laughs> um, and uh, with respect to the book, uh, you know, my last pitch is, to, to your point, well over two years of research, a legitimate business book. Uh, take it for what it's worth for any vertical. I use an example vertical. It all starts at 420msp.com, and we absolutely adore feedback. I shared a couple of uh, feedback examples that were negative. Um, Laura, bring it on. Jenny Hallmark and I, we're, we're, we, we, we can take it. Uh, you know, your feedback helps us do our job better. And so I love it. Thank you for and having even, me on the show. <laughs> oh, it was so great to have you on, as always. And what I love is it doesn't matter what industry you're currently in, whether you're in tech, which the book has a focus on, there's something in here that you can take. And you've got so many years of experience, Harry, um, helping people really take things to the next level. So thank you again for being here. And everybody out there, consider you know, possibly how you can support the cannabis industry with your business that you have right now. Yep, yep, yep. All right, and remember, everybody, the right questions can change your life. So what are you asking today, whether it's about cannabis or not? Doesn't matter. I'm sure I'll get lots of notes about this episode, but have a great day, everybody, and have fun. You've been listening to It's All About the Questions, starring Laura Stewart. Connect with Laura at itsallaboutthequestions.com and download a free workbook that will help you ask better questions starting today. 